Jeff, I know that you are a CISO and I know that you have a lot of CISO friends, if that's a possibility today, but you've talked about this before. Why are CISOs, you called it exiting or exodus of CISOs leaving the industry? So, so what's difficult with the role? Chief Information Scapegoat Officer. Um, yeah. Why are they leaving? That was actually one of the hardest articles to write. Um, it, it, it actually ground me to the core of it when I wrote that article because some really good friends and mentors left the organization, their organizations. And one of them retired like 10 years early. You know, like you had a very lucky run with buyouts and all this stuff and, and all that stuff. But he was a seasoned, and I would say a career CEO. So he wanted to do the best of the tumbles and all that stuff. And they sat down with him and said, you know, I said, what, why, why did you do this? And he goes, because honestly, it's making me old. He says, I am at an age where I can retire early. I'm lucky. But I said, you know, I've talked for years. You're like, this is the next challenge you want me. He said, no, I'm not worth the challenge anymore. Companies, boards, even now the governments are now targeting us. And so the new, and this was about around the, uh, after the SAC thing, right? But he's like, you think about it. I go to my CIO in this company and I ask for money and he says, no, we need this for the business. And I'm like, but I actually need this to make sure the business works. And they're like, no, I have regulations that are coming down on me. And it's just, and, and, the, and then they're like, oh, by the way, make it work with the budget you have. Well, if I do that, I would choose the security somewhere else because I have to build or cur uh, get new order or something else, right? The business is moving really fast, but I'm moving at a snail pace because I'm constantly trying to rationalize and, uh, and get new money and all this stuff. So I feel like I'm going back to the business. And this was a story I was getting back and forth, right? Back and forth, you know, we have incidents, you know, we get money for, for, for the incident. You know, and I, I and I call it golden golden handcuffs for the security organization, not for the CISO of the team, because the CISO will leave after you know after a time, right? And the next CISO comes in, and they're like, oh, by the way, you have a hundred million dollar budget because of the the breach. Now that you get it to eighty million, you've signed three year deals. You can't. You 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 like so you now look this topic, and he's like, it's never seen as a, a security is never seen as a stability part of the organization. It's seen as a as a, as a drain. And, you know, their whole idea of drive possible growth over here, right, which we fully support, we want to get there, but actually, like any company, they funnel the money into that product, not into actually making sure the other products work. And one of the parts of your organization is security, right? And that was another, another female CISO, it was, it was funny because it was heartbreaking. She was like, you know what, I, I, I felt worse in the last five years working Right, because of the leadership and them not a me being a female being marginalized, but also people talk about, hey, you're at the table. Well, the problem is, is if I'm sitting at the table, is it the kids' table, the adults' table? And you know, and they said, well, you have a voice mm -hmm. at the table. And she was like, yeah, but having a voice means nothing. Nobody's listening. And she says, I'm responsible for it. It's it's like so and so's uh, so and so's hit. People go online and go, oh, the CISO is so and so. God, she did a bad job. As no, we don't do a bad job, right? We just have so many hands. You know, you can only do so much when both hands are tied behind your back, and they keep throwing stones in front of you. Sooner or later, you get out of the chase. And I know that's a long, long-winded answer, but I wrote that, and I talked to this is no one. I wrote with twenty people, right? Males, females, you know, different things. I mean, it was, it was. It made me actually reflect on myself. And if she should talk to the wife and she's like, well, what would you do? Because you're so ingrained in this. This is what you do even in private life. You write, you 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 go to 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 old people's home and talk about how to protect themselves on phones and what to do when somebody calls you and ask you for things and stuff like that's part of who you are, right? That will kill you faster than actually this what's going on now. Right. And it's better just to talk about it and go through it. And you know, I didn't realize this was the question because <laughs> uh, and, and it's 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 actually a little bit emotional for me at this moment, which is 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 good or bad because I I realize you know you are doing a great job out there telling people you know asking these questions these questions are relevant all the time right and this gets bigger for us all you know why would I want to be a CISO in a public company today when the the SEC said it's my fault but actually I have no control of how much money I get 
what the hackers do, and my board doesn't care about me. You know, they say, the SEC said, how did 70 people, uh, we had 170 comments, and I feel like out of all my CISOs, not one of them commented because we're busy doing the job, right? And the original document had a lot more about board members and, and, and C level, right? So the 170 didn't come from us, it gave them a whole bunch of other people, right? Okay, I'm getting off my, 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 my high wall set. Now I love it. Jeff, thank you so much. This was, I love chatting with you. And so thank you. This was appreciative. Thank you, Mike. It's been a pleasure, honestly. And, and uh, I still can't believe this. Not long ago, I remember I just started my new job as well when we talked. Yeah. Uh, good times. Thank you. Thank you.